This is episode 263 of Jumble Think. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Jumble Think, where we interview amazing people about their journey of turning dreams and ideas into reality. Along the way, we're going to share some tips on how you can turn your own dreams and ideas into reality, too. Today's guest is Shayna Yadid. More about Shayna in a moment. Whether you're a new listener or a longtime fan, if you haven't subscribed to Jumble Think already, right now is the time to do it. Head on over to your favorite place to listen to podcasts and subscribe to Jumble Think. If you are a fan of Apple Podcasts, it's even easier. Jumblethink.com slash iTunes. Jumblethink.com slash iTunes. It will take you right to the app, right to where you can subscribe. Now let's jump into today's show. Hey there, welcome to Jumblethink. My name is Michael Woodward. I am your host. We have a very fun show lined up for you today. We are going to take a moment right here and thank the people who make today's show possible, our sponsors. Today's show is sponsored by Penji your source for unlimited graphic design at a low monthly rate. And as a listener of JumbleThink, they are giving your first month for 15% off. All you have to do is go to Penji, P-E-N-J-I dot C-O, that's dot C-O, and use the code Jumble, J-U-M-B-L-E, to get 15% off your first month. So head on over, Penji dot C-O, use that code Jumble. We also want to thank OpportunityInChina.com, connecting you with amazing learning and teaching experiences abroad. Check them out at OpportunityInChina.com. Today's episode was recorded live at Stand Up New York for Podcast Row. Super excited about today's show. Our guest is Shayna Yadid. She is the founder and CEO and lead trainer at You Did It Dog Training and the executive director of You Did It Sustainable Dog Rescue. She is an animal behavior college certified dog trainer. Super fun episode. I've never talked to a dog trainer, so we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about overcoming obstacles in life and so, so much more. Let's go ahead and jump into today's conversation with our guest, Shayna Yadid. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. I honestly have had some of the best like interactions today that I've had about my business since we started. This has been so much fun. Super, super cool. And you're based out of Durham, North Carolina? I am indeed. All right. But you're a New Yorker, and we're here in New York at Podcast Row. Yes, we are. And actually, in fact, I made it to Podcast Row because of a post from a fellow like high school graduate wow. that is here downstairs because he's friends with Donnie. And he wow. was like, if you're an entrepreneur that needs your story to be heard, that's nice. click this link. And I was like, click the link, apply now. I'm going. <laughs> Got this. Super cool. Well, we're going to kick this off with some rapid fire questions, if that sounds good to you. That sounds great. I hope I can rapid fire answer. All right. Well, <laughs> first question is, as a child, what did you want to be when you grew up? Oh, <laughs> So many various things at various times. Uh, I think I went through a phase where I wanted to be a fashion designer. Okay. I think that that was probably the most like formidable one that comes up the most throughout high school. Oh, cool. Or, I'm sorry, throughout elementary school. I don't know how I said high school. <laughs> all right. We're, we're all about big ideas and dreams here at Jumble Think. So what is one tip you give someone with a big idea or dream and they don't know where to start? Huh. <laughs> Well, it's my least favorite piece of advice okay. because it's been given to me so many times, Yeah, but simplify it. All right. <laughs> I love that. Simplify it. If you can simplify it, it's worth continuing to pursue. And if you can't, you probably are missing something. Wow. Wow. You uh, have perspectives of living in the South and the Northeast. And the Midwest. And the Midwest. Where? I lived in Chicago. For you, how are you defining success? Success to me is how well one handles adversity, both in business and in life. Yeah, and we're going to be talking a lot more about adversity and overcoming that a little bit later in the show, because uh, I know you have some crazy stories, so <laughs> we're going to talk <laughs> about <on>. that. <laughs> and you are creating uh, a space for yes. yourself in entrepreneurship. Yes. How do you keep inspired? I sing motivational pop songs to my inner child. Really? <laughs> Yes. Okay. I uh, am going to wrap up this segment yeah. with this final rapid fire question. Oh, I'm excited. All right. All right. What is one dream you're still wanting to fulfill in your own life? Hmm. My dream is to have a facility that is a training and community space okay. that allows me to adopt dogs out from my rescue, train dogs through the non or sorry, for, through the for profit, yeah. which then 
sustains the rescue. Yeah. And have a community of tiny homes for other survivors of sexual trauma to come out to our community space and learn how to train their future emotional support dog in our handler course that helps them rediscover their inner strength and self-confidence while they are staying on our, I guess, you did it hippie survivor commune <laughs> okay. of tiny houses All because right. sustainability is key. All right. Very cool. Very cool. Well, we will be back with Shana. You did. And we're going to talk so much more. I'm excited. Let's do it. Today's show is sponsored by our friends over at OpportunityInChina.com. Here is more about them. Have you been looking for a way to change your career or social prospects? Do you see the world around you changing and haven't quite figured out what path you should take? You are not alone in seeking opportunity. Visit OpportunityInChina.com for access to scholarships to attend University in China or... If you have a bachelor's degree already, OpportunityInChina.com provides access to jobs in the educational sector all across China. Now, working in China is not only often well-paid, but it will place you among one-fifth of the world's population, boosting your social network, bringing you more deeply into the story of globalization, and opening up doors you never knew existed. So seize your opportunity now. Visit their website for more information at OpportunityInChina.com. Today's show is also sponsored by our friends over at Penji. Penji helps startups, small businesses, agencies, large corporations, and marketing teams achieve more with unlimited graphic design support at one flat monthly rate. Their easy-to-use online platform pairs you with a professional designer and lets you create as many design projects as you want. Think of it as your monthly subscription to top-notch design. No contracts, no hourly billing, just fast, simple, and affordable graphic design for all of your needs. Here at JumbleThink, we have used them on some of our own projects, including our logo for Idea Camps. We love them. We think you're going to love them. And as a listener of JumbleThink, they are giving 15% off your first month if you go to Penji, P-E-N-J-I dot C-O, that's dot C-O, not dot com, and use the code JUMBLE, J-U-M-B-L-E. So head on over, Penji dot C-O, use that code JUMBLE to get 15% off your first month. Now let's jump back into today's conversation with Shana You Did. All right, we are back with Shana You Did, and we're talking about her business, You Did It, dog training, You Did It, sustainable dog rescue. I, You know, we're going to kick it off with a hard question. Mm -hmm. How can people find and connect with you? Super hard. Oh, so hard. Uh, so hard. Instagram, LinkedIn, okay. Facebook, Twitter. Mm, need I say more? <laughs> Well, you can find those links on jumblethink.com in the episode notes. So wherever you're listening, watching, whatever you're doing to consume this content, head on over to jumblethink.com. And if you're looking for a dog, it's sustainablerescue.org because I know you'll remember that one. That's awesome. Great, great URL for that. How in the world did you get into a love for animals? I was born with that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was more about cultivating it in spite of living in the Upper East Side of Manhattan, yeah, surrounded by buildings okay. and you know concrete, <laughs> yeah. Um, but I grew up in a building that has 700 plus apartments in it, and for me, I had everybody else's dogs because when I told my mom I wanted a dog when I was little, <laughs> she looked me dead in the face and said, "Honey, there are days I don't want to take you out for a walk." <laughs> She's got a good sense of humor, that one. Yeah. <laughs> um, but definitely born with it and cultivated over years and years and years. You say cultivate. How do you go from a love and a desire to be around animals to a place where that becomes your business? Well, as a even elementary school into middle school, I've been a pet sitter and babysitter for okay. years and years and years. And it was always kind of like my side money. Okay. And then uh, I took a gap year out of high school, came back. I spent three months at college, had a pretty awful experience and said, nope, not for me. Bye. Nobody really knew why. I didn't really share much about it. And uh, I moved kind of was leaning back towards that pet sitting, yeah. babysitting. I was working kind of on and off at a doggy daycare, had had a bad experience there. It was just like a whole bunch of things that were saying animals, but how do you get around the people? <laughs> <laughs> like, how do you deal with the fact that all these business owners or all these people, you know, it, it just didn't necessarily feel safe or mm -hmm. like it was a complete idea for me. Like I knew that there was more and one of my uh, pet sitting clients 
introduced me to the book Animals in Translation by Temple Grandin. Okay. Not familiar with that, but that's well, not my space, so I wouldn't be. okay. <laughs> Temple Grandin is, uh, she has got a PhD in animal science. She's a professor of uh, animal behavioral sciences at the University of Colorado, and she is also a high-functioning autistic woman. Oh, wow. Cool. Uh, and her book, Animals in Translation, the subtitle is Using the Mysteries of Autism to Decode Animal Behavior. Wow. I ate that book, and I am not a fast reader. Okay. And uh, I was enrolled in dog training school two weeks later because wow. it helped me realize that my calling wasn't just working with animals. I had to be the one training them and teaching people to communicate with them. Funny enough, my mom and dad call me the missing link because I've got, you know, monkey toes. So <laughs> it kind of works. I was the missing link and I figured it out by way of Temple's book. Wow. Wow. It's always interesting on the things that help us. Uh, be inspired to take steps into those places of a known. Uh, I know that, uh, and you've alluded to it a little bit, that you've had to face some uh, difficult places of adversity. How has that shaped your journey to the place that you are today? Well, each time that life has figuratively or literally ripped the rug out from under me, my response is to come back tenfold. Okay. Uh, and what that means to me is, yeah, I might fall apart. I might be really hurting. I might be in pain. It might be unpleasant. Yeah. But ultimately, when you knock me down, all you've done is given me more strength. And actually, uh, to reference another, I keep referencing her songs. I'm going to have to give her credit. Farrah Bareilles, she's the bomb. <laughs> She came out with a relatively new song called Armor. Okay. And basically she talks about how every time somebody puts you down or says something bad about you or something bad happens in your life, if you give it that intention, that becomes your armor. That becomes your power. Actually, another song, Superheroes by the Script. Yeah. There's a line in her belly. There's a line in her heart. Fire in his soul, beast in his belly that's so hard to control. They've taken too much hits, taken blow by blow. Now light a match, stand back, watch him explode. Okay. You are finding a place of healing through your relationships with uh, the animals you train and through the people you help also overcome their trauma with those pets that become partners in, in, in that journey of life. And uh, you look at let's say Washington, D.C. The, the old adage is that if you want a friend in Washington, go buy a dog, you know? And so... Uh, Tell that to President Trump. And so the question becomes, why is there such a, a bond between animals and humans? Uh, specifically, we see it in, in you know, the, the old adage, the, the, the cat lady or uh, the dog that sits on the front porch with its owner long into their, their golden years. So tell us about why there's such a bond there and why that's significant. So actually, I, I was working with a hypnotherapist recently, and we were discussing my dog, Ted. Okay. We call him Big Head Ted. Okay. He's a big red-nosed pity, and honestly, his head is about three times the size of my face. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's a substantial face. Yeah. And Ted is kind of an anxious boy. Okay. He tends to get a little leg shaking, but his anxiety is very, like, emotion-based. And you okay. can tell it's mostly that he's just so emotionally in tune that if I'm having a rough time or something, he tends to get a little bit more anxious about just normal routine stuff. Yeah. And he actually pacifies himself with this big old blankie. Like, he yeah. balls up a blanket and puts it in his mouth like a pacifier. Yeah. Ted... Uh, the reason I kind of started there is because what dogs do for their people and what dogs do naturally, and really all animals do naturally, is they are essentially energy healers. Okay. Which I couldn't say that I fully understood until I got my Reiki Level 1 certification and started doing some energy healing work myself and really starting to delve into that metaphysical kind of uh, healer's world. Yeah. Which... Again, I think I was kind of born there, but I had to, you know, access it eventually. And dogs, especially, but cats also, and really any companion animal, they absorb your negative energy, and they naturally ground themselves and release that negative. The joke with Ted is that he's not always the best at releasing it. He's just really good at absorbing it, and that's okay. why he's so nervous. Yeah. But um, it's really just they help us do the thing that we may not always feel is accessible for ourselves to do for us. Yeah. 
that grounding, that release of the negative and just recenter. Yeah. So it can be a real strength for a person who's struggling. And, and we hear about this all the time. Uh, we hear about war vets that come back and uh, have massive trauma and how their service animal helps them. We hear about how animals are a service uh, to the blind. We, mm -hmm. So you hear, you see it in society quite a bit, and I think it's becoming more of a norm that that's integrated into our culture. Uh, even H.W. Uh, Walker uh, Bush or George Bush yes, Senior. Yes, yes. Yeah, there we go. Uh, that actually, right. that story got me a little yeah, bit. Yeah, had uh, had his service dog, who's now gone on to serve another. Did person. you hear about Carrie Fisher's service dog? No. Gary, he got to see her in the new movie. Wow. And like, they they videoed his reaction, and it was just so precious. And he like knew that his mom was still helping people. Wow. And I was just like totally like floored. <laughs> yeah. But um, on even just to take it one step further in terms of what dogs do for us in in my model and and what I've realized is really what I want to give back to the world yeah. based on my own experiences in this world yeah. is oftentimes as a survivor of trauma, it is very difficult to give yourself the care and the love and the just worthiness yeah. that you deserve yeah. because of how it can feel when you're not really here. You're being transported back in time and yeah. reliving experiences that you never really wanted to live in the first place. Yeah. And in my experience and in talking to a number of other people that have also experienced, you know, similar, uh, similar traumas, different traumas, doesn't just trauma, uh, doing positive things for another living being helps you to feel okay about doing it for yourself. So yeah. with the dog training, you're relearning these leadership skills and these things that help you, but you aren't doing it for you. It's always for the dog. Yeah. And that's that's where uh, I think my model stands out because it helps trauma survivors do what they need to do to help themselves by helping yeah. another living creature. Let's talk a little bit about uh, you did it and what that looks like. You talked about rescue dogs are a part of it. You talk about people with trauma and and people who are dealing with struggles there, using that as a tool. What have you created? Where do you want to take that? So as of right now, I have the for-profit. I train pet dogs. Okay. And I give 10% of every purchase to the rescue. Yeah. Once we have a facility, which we are currently funding, the goal is to be able to build this community space, with these tiny homes, and have women come out to participate as a sponsored program in a handler course that I've designed that helps redefine inner strength and confidence by way of dog training, and then they leave with this emotional support dog that helps them feel safer and more confident going back out into the, the real world Yeah. Um, and living their lives post-trauma so you're you're helping the dog mm -hmm. you're helping the human yes. and you're training kind of both on how to navigate the future yes interpersonal communication skills on multi-species levels <laughs> that's awesome love that great description Thank one you. of the things as i looked at your bio read your story checked out what you're doing is that uh you've and you mentioned it earlier in the episode uh, how that uh, you would um, come back stronger every time. And, and failure is a part of entrepreneurship. It is a, it's part of life. Uh, and uh, how do you navigate the struggles of, of coming back from a setback? It's always a struggle, but I don't know how to give up. Okay. I think that that's really what it comes down to is there's yeah. a fire that... <laughs> they can try. They've doused me <laughs> with water. They've doused me with fire extinguisher, whatever the heck is in those. <laughs> and hey, my first dog's name is Ember. And oh, I tell wow. people all the time, she's mommy's burning Ember. Oh, wow. She keeps the flame alive. Wow. She's the girl in my logo on my card, little Miss Emberhead. Uh -uh. I shrunk it down and made my own logo. <laughs> nice. And uh, yeah, she's mommy's burning Ember. She keeps the flame alive. So it doesn't matter how many times they try to put my flame out as long as... I've got my dogs and my passion for helping others. 
I got this and I continue to press forward because even when it feels impossible, that's just false. Wow. Nothing is impossible. You just have to believe. Yeah. While we uh, move towards the end of the episode, we always ask the final three questions. Ooh, final three. Final three. How are you finding purpose in what you do? What I do is my purpose. Okay. Like... I created my business around finding my purpose. So helping others is my purpose, and we just like multiple species. Okay. <laughs> yeah. What's one challenge you're currently working to overcome in your business? Securing capital. Okay. To secure a location to increase revenue so that we can actually get this adoption program off the ground and start helping survivors in a time that it very obviously is very, very needed. And then our final questions, what's the next big goal you have for the business? We are currently fundraising on the iFundWomen platform. Okay. Uh, for somewhere between fifty and $75,000. Okay. And the goal with that will be a fully sustainable training facility and shelter space that essentially the for-profit leases space to the nonprofit. And if the nonprofit ever had to leave, they're not codependent, but the for-profit sponsors training for every adoption. Yeah. And all of our dogs come with training because that's, I think, a big piece that's missing in the rescue world across the board. But really, it's that scaling to growth so that this sponsored adoption program has the capacity to take off. So the initial phase is training space and enough land, which we're looking at about two acres, uh, to build this community of tiny homes so that when women do come out for the sponsored adoption program, they really do feel like this is their home, albeit temporarily, and they can grow here. This is a safe place for you to learn, for you to grow, and for you to transform. Super, super cool. Well, we wish you the best in everything you're doing. Thank you. And uh, thank you so much for taking time and being with us. Yeah, thank you so much. This was great. I love the name, by the way. Oh, thanks. Jumble Think. Thanks. Just, that's kind of how I think. So Me too. <laughs> it works. Jumble Think. Cool. I appreciate that. Thanks again. Thank you. Once again, we want to thank today's guest, Shana did for taking time out and being on the show with us. Head on over to jumblethink.com. You can check out the episode notes where you'll find links to all that Shayna is doing. We also want to thank our sponsors for today's show, opportunityinchina.com, connecting you with the best learning and teaching experiences abroad. Check them out, opportunityinchina.com. We also want to thank our friends over at Penji. They offer unlimited graphic design at a low monthly subscription. As a listener of JumbleThink, they're giving you 15% off your first month. All you have to do is go on over to penji.co. That's .co, not .com. Use the code JUMBLE, and you'll get 15% off your first month. We would love to connect with you, and it's easy to do. Head on over to jumblethink.com. You'll find links to Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Doing the journey of chasing big ideas and dreams together is always better. So head on over. Let's be friends, and let's chase our dreams and ideas together. Thank you so much for tuning into our show. I hope it's encouraged you on the journey of chasing your own big ideas and dreams. We believe you were created for something awesome. So get out there, dream big, and change the world around you. Les mères de famille, les enfants, peuvent également prendre un moment revitalisant. Dans quelques mois, lorsque vous aurez bien saisi la technique et que vous serez maître de votre corps, vous pourrez vous décontracter même en travaillant.